Hey guys, Fabio here once again, and welcome you to another review of a horror movie and another review of Friday the 13th film. And today I'm going to review the uh, very fun, um, underrated Jason film, and I'm talking about Jason X. And like I said, it is a very fun movie. Come on, Jason in outer space. I mean, the concept, yeah, it's a little far-fetched. But you know what? It's a lot of fun. It's got some interesting kills. Unfortunately, a lot of it, or well, a lot of the effects in the movie is CGI. But, you know, hey, what can you do, right? But anyway, um, Jason X um, tells is the story, or tells the story of Jason... Um, being unleashed in outer space. That's basically it. I mean, you don't really need a, a big plot uh, summary detailing what happens in Jason X. Basically, Jason uh, gets captured by the government, and he's going to be cryogenically frozen, and he ends up escaping, and um, this girl locks him in the cryostasis chamber, and he actually stabs through it with his machete, causing an emergency in the room and it locks the room down and ends up freezing the room so it freezes Jason and the girl. And we fast forward 400 years in the future and Jason um, and the girl are thawed out and they're put on this uh, science research ship and um, you know they're thawed out. Well the girl's thawed out and then Jason is just kind of thawed out and you know he finds new ways to kill people in outer space. Um, that's it, you know, um, Jason X was basically made because, once again, the, the issue with Jason Goes to Hell, Freddy vs. Jason was still in development hell, and Sean Cunningham was just, you know, once again pissed off because they couldn't decide on what the hell they wanted to do, that he, um, talked to Todd Farmer, the screenwriter who actually has a cameo in the movie as one of the grunt soldiers, um, who had this idea of Jason in space, setting it in the future. That way, Freddy vs. Jason would come out and would fill the gap in on how this movie would take place. And, you know, Cunningham liked the idea, and he had wanted to do another movie, you know, not just to make money. I mean, that's always a part of it, but to, you know, please the fans, because at this point, this came out in 2002, nine years after Jason Goes to Hell. You know, in between Jason Goes to Hell and this one, you know, we had uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. So there was a Freddy Krueger movie that had come out at that point. And at this point, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers and Halloween H2O had come out. And also, a few months before, well, um, a few months after Jason X would come out, Halloween Resurrection would come out. You know, so there you go. But... You know, they wanted to satisfy us, the fans, so they came up with this ridiculous concept of Jason being put in outer space. So there you go. The movie was shot on a budget of $14 million and it only made $16 million. So it only made, um, I guess, a return of $2 million. So that's not a very good percentage of a return. Um, I don't... I know I didn't talk about in the... Um, Jason goes to, well, I'm looking it up right now, how much Jason uh, Goes to Hell made. Well, Jason Goes to Hell had a budget of $3 million and it made $15 million. So, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, so, you know, this movie had definitely taken, this is actually, I think, the uh, second lowest grossing next to uh, Jason Takes Manhattan. And, like I said, it is a fun movie. It is, you know, kind of underrated. You know, the concept is great. I really enjoy the concept. Um, there is things that I dislike about the movie. Um, you know, all the CGI stuff. Now, I know, like, some of the stuff, the only way to do it is really with CGI, but, you know, there's just a little too much, and it doesn't even look that good. You know, this was 2002, and you can always tell by looking at late 90s films and early 2000s films, you know, the, the shitty CGI. And this movie does have some pretty crappy CGI in it, 
Um, you know, I'm not really the biggest fan on CGI. I like movies that do practical effects. Unfortunately, you know, that's not going to happen much nowadays. You know, since CGI is very cheap to do, you know, and they don't care how it looks. They just want to get it done. But, you know, Friday, look at the, the, the first nine Friday the 13th movies. All practical effects. You know, they had lower budgets than this movie. You know, this movie's budget was only $14 million, which, if you think about it, isn't a whole lot. You know, it's probably... No, it's not the highest budgeted film in the franchise. I think that would be Freddy vs. Jason. But, you know, for $14 million, you could do a hell of a lot better with the special effects. Look at the, like I said, the first nine movies. All those movies were made for, yeah, for under... Well, basically, except for Jason Takes Manhattan, under $5 million. And look at all those great special effects that we get in the previous nine movies. You know, so... But I guess they kind of just rushed this one to get it out, you know, to do... You know, to do yet another... To do... Oh, God damn it. Another Jason movie to satisfy the fans while Freddy vs. Jason was in, still in the pipeline. Um, they actually shot this movie up in Canada... Yeah, they shot it in Toronto. Um, Toy Box Canada did the special, all the special effects, all the makeup and the visual effects. And they actually shot the movie in 2000, but it wasn't until early 2002 that the film got released. And yes, like I said, it is the second lowest grossing in the franchise. Um, but, you know... Whatever. Um, yeah, so the movie sat on the shelf for two years. Um, I don't... I can't find any information regarding that. Like, I don't know why they... And they probably just either New Line... I think New Line just didn't want to release it at this point. Or didn't want... You know, because by this time, like, I know... Well, that came out in 2001. Like, Rush Hour 2 had come out, like, right before this. And that made New Line a lot of money. So I guess they were still milking that. Um, but they had a lot, and Blade 2 also came out right around this time. I know that made a lot of money. So I guess New Line just wanted to promote these other films instead of doing another Friday the 13th movie. But the movie, you know, it made money, but it didn't make that great of a return in terms of like a percentage, you know. But this isn't a math lesson. I'm just saying that for the producers, they didn't really make a whole lot back from what they put out, you know, so, I mean, two million dollars to me, or you guys, you know, that's a good bit, because, you know, but to a Hollywood, like, Sean Cunningham, two million dollars is nothing, you know, but, you know, that's because he's a rich Hollywood producer, you know, and we're just these little peons that make movie reviews for nothing, because we love it, but anyway, um, you know, yeah, I don't like the CGI, the score uh, it's okay, I mean, I, it just sounds too modern, you know, it doesn't sound like a Harry Manfredini score to me, it's, you know, it's alright, you know, but, what can you do, right, um, you know, I like the story though, I do like the fact that Jason's in outer space, I think it's a really interesting concept, you know, but, the score is, ugh, you know, the CGI looks shitty, you know, but hey, they wanted to do something to satisfy us, so I, I, I give them props for trying. Um, you know, Kane Hodder is back for the final time thus far as Jason, um, and once again, another fantastic job from Kane. You know, I like the look of Jason in this one. I know a lot of people complain because you can see his eyes and, you know, he's got a little bit of hair. But I don't care. I thought that was pretty cool. And they, you know, they've kind of referenced that in the movie. They're like, he has regeneration powers and stuff. You know, so they, they did explain it. You know, I, I like the look of Jason in this one. And, of course, everybody likes the look of Uber Jason. Uh, Kane said that, you know, the costume was really cool, except, you know, it was really heavy, so it was hard to move in. But, you know, he said it was a really, uh, really fun thing to do, to do that, you know, portion of the movie. 
And I know there's an action figure, a movie maniacs figure of Uber Jason, which I'm trying to get. Because I used to work at this collectible store. And they had it, but it was incomplete. Like, it didn't have any of the weapons. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to buy that if it's incomplete, you know. When I buy figures, I want them complete and in good condition, you know. So, you know, but that's just me. I have a, I'm have a big, like, figure nerd and stuff. You know, I have a lot of pet peeves about figures, so there you go. But, I mean, there is some scenes that I like in the movie. I like the opening scene in the research facility where Jason, you know, kills six people in two and a half minutes. I mean, come on. That's awesome. You know, just that he kills them all like that, you know. And Kane always speaks highly of that scene, so that's awesome. Um, I like the, the scene where the guy, you know, everybody remembers the robot chick that fights Jason. You know, everybody, uh, I like the scene that where he's putting the nipples on her, and she's like, but the other girl has them. I think it's funny, because she's a robot. It's like, you're a robot, you don't need, you know, nipples, but it's a funny scene. Um, everybody remembers the kill where uh, Jason grabs the chick and dips her head in the liquid nitrogen and brings it up and smashes it. That's a great kill. That's one of my favorites. That's probably my favorite in the movie. Um, I like when... Jason stabs the guy with the machete, and then he pulls, like, he stabs him, and then he turns him around, and then he pulls it, or no, I'm sorry, yeah, he stabbed, yeah, he stabs him, he turns him around, and he pulls the blade out instead of the handle, I thought that was cool, I like that, that futuristic machete that he uses, that was pretty cool too, um, I like that little game sequence with the guy and the soldier, who, Todd Farmer played that soldier, he has a cameo, um, I like that, and the kills, and then when they, they get out of the game, and it's real life, and, um, you know, Jason picks that kid up and breaks his back, and that kid is, a uh, Dove, uh, Typhon back, who, um, he's been in a lot of stuff, he's, uh, from Canada, he's from Canada, he's from Toronto, so he was local when they shot the movie, and, uh, he was actually in Tommy Boy, uh, remember that scene at the lake where those kids are picking on uh, Chris Farley? He's one of those kids. Um, he was in an episode of Goosebumps. He was on an episode of Erie, Indiana, which was the original Goosebumps, because that was on before Goosebumps. Uh, he did three episodes of Goosebumps. That's cool. Which was shot in Canada. So there you go. He did a couple episodes of Animorphs. That was a pretty cool show. Uh... Jason X, uh, he was in Knock Around Guys with Vin Diesel, which I liked. He was in the Dolph Lundgren movie, Detention. He was the kid in the wheelchair, which I've seen Detention before, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. So I definitely want to watch it again. Like, I know a lot of people don't like it, but I'm a big Dolph Lundgren fan. And, you know, I want to check out, like, that. some of those, like, that, I... I saw it once, so I want to see it again. And there's still some movies of him that I, that I need to see that I haven't seen yet. But that's another review for another day. Um, he was in Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. He was that hippie kid in the movie. That was funny. I like I liked the Harold and Kumar movies. They were pretty funny. But he's been in a lot of stuff. And I know, I forget what movie it is, but he was in like a werewolf movie that was pretty popular. Uh, it was like a werewolf love story type of movie that he was in. Um, and I, don't, I can't remember what it's called, but he's in it. But anyway, you know, I like that kill where he, he just, like, he jumps on Jason's back. And Jason, like, grabs his, I think he grabs his legs and he brings him around. And he, like, flips him over and then he breaks his back over his knee. I thought that was a really cool kill. I know it's, like, simplistic. You know, there's no, no blood shooting out. But it's still cool how they did it. Um, the, um, when he's killing all the soldiers is cool too, because he, he crushes the guy's head up against the wall, and, you know, the, in the script, he said, or Kane Hodder said that in the script, when he breaks the guy's neck, uh, it said just neck broken, and he said, well, how about I drag him in the corner and just squeeze his throat slowly and then snap his neck at the end, and they're like, okay, so they did that, so that's really cool. Um, I like when he throws the guy on the drill 
and then he's like slowly going down the drill. I thought that was a really cool kill. And, um, you know, like one guy gets his throat slit, pretty, you know, basic. And then the other hook, the guy gets impaled on that hook. And then the guy gets cut down the middle. That was pretty cool, too. Um, everybody also remembers the sleeping bag kill and the virtual reality sequence where they punch up this thing where it's, you know, uh, like Crystal Lake back in the 80s and it's the two VR chips. And they're like, we love smoking pot and we love premarital sex. And Jason's like confused, like he's not sure what's going on. So he kills him. He does the double sleeping bag kill, which Kane said they brought back because that was always his favorite kill in the series. At all the movies, that was his favorite from part seven, the, the sleeping bag kill. So he wanted to bring it back, but he wanted to make it, you know, um, you know, you know, amp it up, you know. So they did that. So that's really cool. And then he realized what's going on, and he throws it through the window. I think. See, I watched the movie earlier, but I had a pretty long day. It's been a long week, so I fell asleep. But I mean, I like the movie and everything. You know, it is kind of underrated because, of, like, you know, people Jason in space. You know, but. I mean, it's not as great, like, as part one. Like, part one through part seven are the best ones, in my opinion. And Freddy vs. Jason. They're all the best. I like part eight. I thought part eight was a good movie. It's just that Paramount screwed the fans over. Uh, Jason Goes to Hell is a really cool movie. It's got a lot of interesting stuff in it. So, you know, they're all cool. But, well... I know I said, you know, part one through seven are the best, and they are. It's just, like, part three is my least favorite, but you guys already know that if you watch the part three review. But, and then I also like the ending where um, the leader of the soldiers, like, remember how Jason rips open the space, like, he, you know, he rips open the spaceship, and everything's getting sucked out. And I like how the, the soldier and him go out, and they go into the Earth's atmosphere, and they're, like, burning up and stuff. And then, like, the mask is underwater, you know. That was really cool. I like that. And I know, like, people, you know, want a Freddy vs. Jason too. You know, I would love it because Freddy vs. Jason was awesome. And, um, you know, people are like, well, when's that coming out? And, you know, all this. But technically, if you think about it, Jason X is the sequel to Freddy vs. Jason because it takes place after. So, who knows. But with the remake, and I know they're talking about doing a sequel to the remake. And Derek, because when I met Derek Mears, I had asked him, I said, you know, are we going to have a sequel? He's like, well, they haven't greenlit it yet. He's like, but I would love to come back and stuff. So, if they do a sequel to the remake, I'll definitely go see it. But, I mean, the remake was good, and I will review it. I mean, it was a really good remake. But, um, I'm sorry. Um, I would rather see a Freddy vs. Jason too because, once again, that was awesome. You know, I remember it coming out and the hype and everything. So, you know, that would be cool to see that. But anyway, that's, I'm talking about the next movie. But, um, anyway, you know, once again, Jason X is a fun movie. You know, interesting concept. They just did it for fun. That's basically what they made the movie for. For fun and to get another Friday the 13th movie out. Since the uh, Freddy vs. Jason was taking forever. But anyway, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope you guys like this review. And stay tuned because next I'm actually going to review the Friday the 13th remake. I'm going to skip over Freddy vs. Jason. I'm going to do that last. Because after Friday the 13th I'm going to do Nightmare on Elm Street. So that would be like the last movie that I'm going to review for Horror Movie Month, you know, kind of tie in. Uh, so that's why I'm skipping over Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, so once again, thanks guys, and uh, see you later, and peace out.